Many moons ago, Bill Gates envisioned households around the world using a personal computer when a lot of people didn't know what one was. That vision became a reality, and Gates has seen a few other of his predictions come true since. He's now looking into his crystal ball again, and in it, he sees virtual reality avatars as part of your everyday life. He sees an end to the long lines at the doctor's office, he's seen your brain being read by your phone, and he sees, thank God, some good news just around the corner. Number 10. As you know, Gates has been very outspoken on the matter of a certain pandemic that has pretty much changed the world we live in in the last two years. Still, if you'd heard what he was saying at the end of 2020, you know that he was hopeful 2021 would be a vast improvement. He wasn't exactly spot on with that prediction. Gates admits that this year his hopes had been somewhat dashed and things didn't improve quite as much as he'd like them to, but this time he feels quite certain that the end is in sight. He wrote that now with billions of people vaccinated, the world is somewhat closer to normal. He starkly added that if you're one of the millions of people who lost a loved one to the virus over the last 12 months, you certainly don't think this year was any better than last. He admitted that the new variants he hadn't seen coming, or at least he didn't see the full extent of the damage they'd cause. Nonetheless, he said this time he is more confident that the pandemic and the devastation it causes will be over by the end of 2022. You might ask what gives him such confidence? It's not only the vaccinations people have taken, but that this time the world is so much better prepared to deal with new variants, including the Omicron variant. Of that, he says, we caught this variant earlier than we discovered Delta, because South Africa has invested heavily in genomic sequencing capabilities, and we're in a much better position to create updated vaccines if needed. Like many scientists, Gates believed that the virus will peter out just as other viruses have done in the history of mankind. He added, communities will still see occasional outbreaks, but new drugs will be available that could take care of most cases and hospitals will be able to handle the rest. Your individual risk level will be low enough that you won't need to factor it into your decision making as much. Not only that, but he believes our breakthroughs in the mRNA vaccines will mean the next time a virus tries to shake our reality, we'll be ready to make a safe, effective vaccine super fast. He called this a game changer, and he said when you add in our experience with non-pharmaceutical interventions or NIPs, when the next virus does hit, we'll be much better at keeping people safe without having to create so much mental stress and financial devastation. That's all good, but what if our world becomes so damaged a virus is the last thing on our minds? Number 9. Gates is certainly not all doom and gloom. He has some promising things to say about the climate crisis too. What we need right now, he said, is collaboration, and if anything has shown us just how capable we are of working together across the world, the pandemic has. In 2021, Gates, a man who undoubtedly is an acquired taste, admitted that he is an imperfect messenger on climate change. After all, a lot of folks out there don't like being told by a billionaire with private jets and a fleet of cars that they have to change their lifestyle. Gates said of that, it's true that my carbon footprint is absurdly high. For a long time, I felt guilty about this. Still, he said he has managed to reduce his carbon footprint, not only by making some personal changes, but by investing in zero-carbon technologies. He now believes that the world is ready to collaborate and attempt to do such things as reduce the amount of steel and cement we produce, which accounts for about 14-16% to 16 of global carbon emissions. Gates mentioned a new technology that injects recycled carbon dioxide back into the cement before it goes to the construction site. The outfit that's doing this, called Carbon Cure, already has some big-name customers such as LinkedIn and McDonald's. Gates wrote, so far, it's only able to reduce emissions by around 10%, though it hopes to get to 33% eventually. He believes the pandemic has pushed people and companies to really make a difference, saying our emissions, it seems, are no longer a problem that we're willing to kick down the road. So his prediction is that 2022 will be a success in terms of increased collaboration about the climate crisis. Ok, but what about the very important factor of your own immediate health? Number 8. Gates was a further bearer of good news when he said in 2021 that how we look after our health will improve. One reason for that is the fact that health technology is improving as we speak. According to Gates, the pandemic forced us to innovate as hospitals were overstretched and some people couldn't get to see their doctor. Imagine a world in which your smartwatch beeped and told you there was a small problem, after which you were told exactly what to do and you never even had to leave the comfort of your own home. Of his prediction in this regard, Gates said, Right now, when it's time for your annual physical, you probably need to go to your doctor's office to have your vital signs taken and blood drawn. But what if you had a device at home that your doctor could remotely control to measure your blood pressure? What if you could look at the data collected from your smartwatch to see how you sleep and what your active heart rate is? He also says that it'll become normal to go to a convenient location near your house where your blood can be tested. After that, the results will be sent to your doctor and in turn, that doctor can send you all the relevant information. 
One of the problems with concerning how fast this will take off in 2022 is the fact that we still don't have gadgets equipped with sensors that are adequate at confidently spotting a problem or potential problem. Gates might be talking about 2022, but in reality he's likely looking farther ahead. Still, he talked about one matter relating to our health that might improve very quickly. Number 7. That is the fact that we are on the cusp of seeing vast improvements when it comes to diagnosing Alzheimer's disease. Gates wrote Alzheimer's Diagnostics. Huge progress has been made on this front recently, and there's a decent chance that the first affordable accessible blood test for Alzheimer's will get approved next year. The problem, of course, is that if you're diagnosed with Alzheimer's, there is no cure. In fact, mankind is still unable to slow down its progress. So what's so good about being able to diagnose faster? According to Gates, this will help speed up the process of eventually finding a treatment. This is something he feels very passionately about since his own father died from the disease last year. In fact, one out of every nine families in the US has someone over the age of 65 with Alzheimer's. Gates wrote, too many families are being forced to watch their loved ones go downhill and disappear. It's a brutal way to lose someone, and right now there's no way to stop or even slow down the decline. He explained that if these new diagnostics do become the norm very soon, scientists will be able to find sufferers who've only recently shown in even the minutest signs of having it. Usually, people don't know they have it at the start of the disease, so if they're diagnosed quickly, that'll mean they'll be able to take part in trials and will help scientists test various hypotheses. Gates mentioned research that's currently happening at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden. He said that researchers there are in the process of looking into new ways of finding things in the blood that might indicate the early onset of Alzheimer's. One of these is a protein called amyloid, which can cause plaques in the brain. Gates sees a future in which you get your regular blood tests done, but it isn't just for checking your heart, liver, kidneys, blood sugar, etc., but the test also gives doctors information as to how your brain is doing. The next one is even more hopeful for many people in certain regions of the world. Number 6. Something historic happened while you weren't looking in 2021. The World Health Organization approved a malaria vaccine. This is groundbreaking, with the WHO saying this is a historic moment. The long-awaited malaria vaccine for children is a breakthrough for science, child health, and malaria control. Currently around 600,000 people in the world die from malaria each year, most of them children. Thanks to the vaccine, Gates sees this number being vastly reduced. In fact, in his crystal ball, he sees mass malaria deaths eventually being a thing of the past. To explain that, he said, this new vaccine is giving us insights into how to develop second-generation vaccines and preventative tools that can be used on all ages, are even more effective, and can help us reach the goal of eradication. Ok, it's time we talked about the metaverse? Number 5. First of all, what the hell is a metaverse? What it simply means is humans interacting in a virtual space with computers. It's the next frontier in our connection with our devices. It's not always great, of course, because face-to-face -face human interactions are important for all of us, but it might just make your life a bit easier. Gates said, within the next two or three years, I predict most virtual meetings will move from a 2D camera image grid, which I call the Hollywood Squares model, although I know that probably dates me, to the metaverse, a 3D space with digital avatars. He said, what's coming is a kind of virtual meeting with people that replicates the feeling of being in an actual room with them. To make this happen, you need things like virtual reality goggles and motion detector technology, but if Bill got this one right, the adoption of such tech will happen sooner than we think. Still, if this will be partially beneficial to humans is debatable. There are a lot of people out there that think we need to put our tech down a bit more and embrace the old-fashioned thing of being together in the skin. Gates also had some bad news in regard to how we use technology. Number 4. He said one of the worrying things in 2020 and 2021 that he noticed was a heightened lack of trust in governments. He said, based on what I've seen over the last couple of years, I'm more worried than I've ever been about the ability of governments to get big things done. People wanted someone to blame for the pandemic and the lockdowns and the hardships and so they chose the government, he said. But he also said the lack of trust came in the form of a political divide in which one side blamed the other. As for the media, it made hay while the people were busy putting the blame on the right or the left or the middle or the bits of the extreme to both sides. Gates said there are many reasons for this growing divide, including a 24-hour news cycle, a political climate that rewards headline generation over substantive debate, and the rise of social media. What he has seen is an increase in the spread of misinformation, aka fake news. No doubt he's seen himself in a few articles that say dubious things about him. If he read the comments on the social media platforms where the stories were posted, he would have seen one side calling the other ignorant or perhaps designating them as sheeple, while the other side accused its foe of being moronic tinfoil hat wearers. You've all seen it, and it worries Mr. Gates. At the end of the day, a good society needs robust debate, but it doesn't need mass hatred and cynical distrust. 
It needs solidarity. It also needs regular helpings of a thing called truth. In Gates's mind, society isn't seeing enough solidarity and truth at the moment, and he partly blames social media. So, going to 2022, Gates, like many politicians right now in the world, says social media platforms need to feel the weight of the government. He said, I believe the governments need to regulate what you can and can't use social media for. In the United States, this topic has raised a lot of free speech questions, but the reality is that our government already has all sorts of norms around communication. Still, he admits that choosing one truth is not easy to do, especially when the subject matter is very complex or at least a work in progress. As you all know, science is continuously upgrading itself, but according to Gates, social media could still do more to protect people from what he called tangible harms. He gave the example of articles doing the rounds online that said the COVID vaccination could make people infertile. He said it doesn't help when a person's particular political representative is stirring the pot, adding this creates a compounding effect where people lose confidence in the government, elect politicians who share their distrust, and then become even more disillusioned. Ok, so what does he see as a fix for this in the year ahead? He actually said he couldn't come up with a solution. He was stumped. But he said in the next year he believes that young people especially will have fresh ideas about how to tackle a problem that is so deeply rooted in the internet. Nonetheless, he said one thing that can help as we move to 2022 is more transparency around scientific issues. If folks are given clear data, they might have more confidence in institutions. Even that can be tricky though, if politicians get involved and stir the pot. We don't know for sure the origins of COVID, which has become a contentious issue. So in this regard, Gates seems to think we have a lot of hurdles to cross before we make any progress or more likely, he sees a pileup on the hurdle highway. Ok, so now let's talk about you. Yes, you. Number 3. Gates said one of the most positive things that have happened to him during the pandemic is he spent much more time watching educational videos on platforms such as YouTube. Let's face it, many of us have. This cannot be a bad thing at all, providing you're watching some quality content and not just seeing who would win in a scorpion vs spider fight. Ok, so animal fights are nothing to turn your nose up at, but many of you watching this video will have watched a ton of other educational videos during the pandemic. Gates said, I'd like to keep up my COVID era habit of watching lots of educational videos on YouTube and subscription services like Wondrium because they're actually a really good way to learn about obscure topics. I know more about glass making, bird watching, and the history of America and Samoa than I ever expected. Just to see if Gates was doing what others were doing, we looked at one survey published by MarketingCharts.com that showed learning new things was the most popular kind of video in the 2000 US video watchers had interviewed. The website said, it would appear that upskilling has been on viewers' minds since the pandemic, with the largest proportion, 33%, claiming they've watched videos to teach themselves new skills. As Gates said, this has been a positive thing to help during the pandemic, but it's very likely a habit people won't just quit. He believes learning more online will just be the post-pandemic new normal. But as you'll now see, our new normal online education will mean more than learning skills at home and occasionally seeing a spider make short work of a scorpion. Number 2. Formal education has already been partly transformed during the pandemic since many people have had to learn at home. What that means, of course, was improved technology that helped teachers hold virtual class. Ok, so you've probably seen your teacher's new stress-related hair loss and the fact that he now pines for a dirty and noisy classroom. But let's remember that virtual teaching tools are being vastly improved right now. Gates says these improvements in online learning will help teachers when they do get back to the classroom for good. He said if you're a teacher, you'll gain a deeper understanding of how your students are doing. He believes that technology itself will be able to point out our problems, not just used as an administrative tool. Such artificial intelligence, he believes, will also be able to tell students where they're going wrong and how they can fix it. One of the problems, though, is ensuring all children have access to technology, something Gates said is at least getting better. According to him, since the pandemic started, more kids have had access to computers and software, and this will only improve as we go on. Now let's talk about how your phone might soon be able to tell you how your brain is functioning. Number 1. Imagine you could play around on your smartphone and it tells you some very important information as to how your brain is working. We already discussed Gates' hopes regarding Alzheimer's, but he also has high hopes for the tech being able to see how other aspects of your brain are functioning. He's been investing money into something called the Diagnostics Accelerator, of which there are 25 candidates as we speak. One of them is called Cogstate. The company website says, We believe that brain health is profoundly important to the quality of life and should be easier to measure. Gates is very optimistic about such technology, which he describes as a person being able to play a series of what looks like mobile games, but the technology actually tells you something about your cognitive function. He talks about another company called Altoida, which again uses an application and normal phone technology to assess brain health and neurological disease. Imagine a near future in which your smartphone is able to tell you that you may have some serious problems under the hood. 
that's good news for everyone. But change is also scary, especially as it's so easy to conjure up a dystopian nightmare. In this regard, Gates quoted one of his favorite writers, Sapiens author Yuval Noah Harari, and his wise words that Gates liked so much were, people are usually afraid of changes because they fear the unknown, but the single greatest constant of history is that everything changes. Now you need to watch 500 years from now, what will life on Earth be like? Or have a look at scary experiments that could have ended the world.